Bible Treasures Topic 9 Spiritual Battle Welcome to the Sound Doctrine Telecast. Since last week we have been studying the subject of spiritual warfare. This is quite a delicate subject. Unless we are diligent in the study, we will become very susceptible to deception. We must not deviate even slightly from what is taught clearly in the Holy Bible. Because that is what exactly the apostles in their times warned their congregations about. Look at one apostolic warning for an example in 1st John 4th chapter. Look at verse 6. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. This we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. In other words, the apostles were telling if someone is listening to what we teach as the apostolic doctrine revealed by God to us, he is in the spirit of truth. If anyone is not happy about the apostolic teaching that we gave, he is bound up in the spirit of error. Yes, beloved, the teaching we have got in the Bible, especially the New Testament, we all have this apostolic doctrine. Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And all scripture is by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We can conclude anything that is extra biblical has the source of the spirit of error. We can overcome the attacks of the spirit of error only when we go deep and we are founded strongly in the written word of God. Without the spirit of truth, we cannot overcome the spirit of error. There is a very clear cut illustration for us in book of Romans 16th chapter. We will read from verses 17 unto verse 20. Now I urge you, brothers, not those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the simple people. And when you come to the 19th words, your obedience has become known to all. There comes a promise following that. Verse 20. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. We can summarize what is taught in these four verses like this. If you stay with the doctrine that we have received. And you avoid those who are talking anything contrary. Definitely you will overcome Satan because the Bible says the God of peace shall crush Satan under your feet shortly. This is exactly the purpose of these telecasts. Now we want to expose to you the spirit of error. How do we do that? We try to equip you with the truth that is so openly taught and revealed in God's holy word. We all know about that famous spiritual weapon passage in book of Ephesians 6th chapter. From verse 11 on to verse 17 we have six weapons for spiritual warfare listed out. And we would like to point out what is the first one and the last one. The first one we have in verse 14. Having girded your waist with truth. And when you come to verse 17, there we have the last of the six in these weapons. It's the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So on one side it is truth, and the other side it is the word of God. In other words, the word of truth and the word of God, they sandwich all the other weapons we are to use in spiritual warfare. 
nothing more and nothing less. We cannot move to the right and we cannot move to the left. We should stay on the central course that is sandwiched by the word of truth and the word of God. Keep this in mind, dear friends, throughout this study. The topic that we are studying is how not to battle. Last week we studied lesson number one. I would like to remind you of what I told in the beginning. First lesson you should know in any spiritual warfare is that you should know your enemy. Under this truth I gave you the first lesson last week. Do not underestimate the devil. Now today we will move on to the other side of the same exhortation. Do not overestimate the devil either. Last week we studied do not underestimate the devil. Today we see the other side of the truth. Do not overestimate the devil either. Beloved, we should always remember and realize that the devil is only a created being. Now if you turn with us to book of Ezekiel 28th chapter, we have a vivid picture of the fall of Satan. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. In other words, Satan was a created being. Now how did he come about and why did he come about? Now if you turn with us to Psalm 148, we have a clue for this secret, this mystery. I'll read from verse 2 to 5. Praise God, all his angels, and praise him, all his hosts. Praise him, sun and moon, and praise him, all you stars of light. Praise him, you heavens of heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. Here we have a picture of the creation of angels. Angels are called in the Bible as hosts of heaven. But Satan, when he rebelled against God, a group of angels joined his rebellion. They have become the evil spirits that we know them today. Now because Satan is only a created being, definitely he is inferior to God who is the creator. Maybe Satan is mighty, but he is not almighty. Unlike God, he has got his own limitations. That's why we have an excellent declaration in 1 John 4th chapter. Look at the 4th verse. So beautifully this truth it should be imprinted on our hearts forever. You are of God, little children, and you have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Now here I want to explain a little bit about the context in which this statement is made. In the first words of the same chapter, he talks about many false prophets. When you come to verse 3, it speaks about the spirit of Antichrist. And when talking about many false prophets, talking about the spirit of Antichrist. Apostle John tells the recipients of his letter, the one who would be reading that letter, says, he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Uh, that is another interesting observation in these words. You are of God, little children. When he writes little children, he was not referring to age. They were not kindergarten children. But he was referring to the normal timidity that people might have when they talk about the devil. And he says, you don't need to be threatened. You may look very timid and small before the devil. But what is your origin? You are of God. You are able to overcome the devil. He who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Now there is another statement which Jesus himself made. 
Now that is in book of Luke 11th chapter. I will read verses 20 to 22. Demon casting was a very regular feature of Christ's ministry. And the religious leaders of his day, they somehow wanted to criticize him. You know what they said? This man is casting out devils by the ruler of the devil. That's what we read from verse 20 to 22 of Luke 11th chapter. If I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and divides his plunder. Now what did Jesus Christ try to say here? The devil is a strong man, but I am a stronger person. John the Apostle said the devil is there, but he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. So we should always remember that Christ is greater than the devil. And he is not only greater, he is also stronger. One thing I want you to remember, beloved, Satan actually is in his down the spiral, he is descending. For example, if you turn with us to the book of Ezekiel 28th chapter and look at verses 16 and 17. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violence within and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing out of the mountain of God. He was pushed up from the mountain of God. Look at the 17th words. Heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. In other words, his first descent was he was dethroned from heaven. And then during the time of Christ, he was totally defeated by Jesus Christ. He tried his level best to somehow overcome Jesus Christ. But what did Jesus confess? John's Gospel, 14th chapter, 30th words. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has nothing in me. Nothing. He was not able to be successful with me. Then Jesus went to the cross. There was the third stage of descent of the devil. Book of Colossians, second chapter, with the 15th words. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. What was the fourth descent? That's going to be in the future. Book of Revelation, 20th chapter. I will read the first three verses to you. I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is in the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set the seal upon him. There is still another thing that is awaiting him. Turn with us to the book of uh, Matthew 25th chapter. Very words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 41. Jesus will also say to those on his left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Are you able to follow this descent of the devil? First he was dethroned from heaven. During the earthly life of Jesus Christ, he was defeated by Jesus Christ. And when Jesus went on the cross, he was disarmed of his power. And then in for 1,000 years, he is detained in that bottomless pit. Finally, he will be thrown into, he will be doomed into eternal fire. What we need today is actually an eye-opening. That was what was really necessary for the servant of prophet Elisha. So many enemies who were encamping around them. And the servant was terribly scared. And what did he tell the prophet Elisha? 
Oh, look at these people, look at these chariots, look at these horses. And you know what uh, Prophet Elisha immediately answered? Those who are with us are more than those who are with the enemies. Then the Prophet also offered a prayer. God, open the eyes of my servant. His eyes were opened. He saw how the entire mountain was filled with not just ordinary chariots, but chariots of fire. Now that's what exactly Apostle Paul prayed for the believers in the Ephesian church. Turn with us to Ephesians first chapter. And I will read to you from verse 18 onwards. The eyes of your understanding may be enlightened, that you may know what is the exceeding greatness of his power, which he is working in us. Beloved, we should always keep the Lord before our eyes. We should not be always thinking about Satan. We read about the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus, you know, in prophecy by David, you know what he said, I foresaw the Lord always before me. And what was the result? So you will not leave my soul in haste. Now there were 12 spies who were sent by Moses into the land of Canaan. Majority brought an evil report. Minority brought a positive report. What did the 10 spies say? Oh, all these Canaanites, they look like giants. But what did the 2 spies say? They are simply a bread for us. You know, two people, they looked at the same people, but one looked at the Lord and the other looked at the enemy. There is another story. You know, when the people of God, the Israelites, they came near Jericho. When they saw the huge walls of Jericho, they were terribly scared. But the truth was, the Jerichoites, they were terrified by the Israelites. That was the testimony of uh, Rahab. Yes, beloved, the devil is afraid of us. Martin Luther gave a statement. One little word can fell Satan. And that word is Christ. Even when the devil attacks us, he can go only as far as God allows him to go. He can't go beyond that. Take the case of Job. What did God tell him? You can touch his possessions, but don't touch his physique. Then God gave him further permission. You can touch his body, but you can't take his life. Yes, beloved, devil has got limitation. The devil is strong, but Christ is stronger. The Bible says, he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. How not to battle. Do not overestimate the devil. Shall we pray? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the lesson that we have learned today. Give us an opening of our eyes so that we may see the exceeding greatness of the power that works towards us. Thank you, Lord, that the devil is only a defeated foe. Victory in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we offer this prayer. Amen.